everyone and welcome back to Nine Nails Garage. Today we got a 2011 Volkswagen Golf GTI. Now the car has 136,000 miles on it and it has some kind of turbo issue with it. So we bought the car for right at $2,500 and it's not going to be our next project car but it's going to be my next daily commuter. So right now I'm commuting in that and uh, I don't know about you but it looks like gas prices are on the rise and we're going to get something a little more fuel efficient. I think this is rated at about 33 miles a gallon. So um, it's going to be a lot more cost effective driving that than, uh, of course, that. So after doing a little bit of research into the Golf GTIs, I believe this car is valued at about five dollars to $6,000 in uh, fully running condition. So I think we got a pretty decent deal on it, but hopefully we can figure out what the issues are and it doesn't cost us too much money. Now, I've got no idea the condition of the engine. We just bought the car, drove it around the neighborhood, and loaded it up. So we're going to unload the car right now. We're going to take it for a spin and we're going to plug in our code reader so we can't see, uh, see if we can monitor what's going on with the engine. See if we can get the engine to misfire and also see if we can get that low boost code to activate. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. So before we take this car for a spin, I do want to check a few things. I want to check fluid levels, uh, oil, coolant, stuff like that. And I also want to check the linkage on the back of the turbo. I want to check it before it gets red hot and uh, I can't touch it. So I know that linkage is a common thing on the wastegate that uh, the hole for the linkage will kind of waller out and it'll leave the valve kind of open. So you definitely lose a heck of a lot of boost that way. Also, we're going to go ahead and show you the car real quick. The body and the interior of this car is in pretty dang good shape. Um, we got a few little dings. We got a ding there and I think there's another ding on the uh, other rear fender back there. But um, other than that, the body's in pretty good shape. We got aftermarket wheels on here. Uh, look pretty good. I really don't know a whole lot about VWs, but I do know that the GTIs and the GLIs have this nice interior. I really like the uh, the plaid look and I like all the options and everything. It's a fairly clean car. It's in pretty good shape and it's gonna make for a great commuter car. Now we're gonna go ahead and jack up the car and see if I can't get to that wastegate actuator linkage in the back of the uh, and the back side of the engine. From what I've seen online so far, I think the uh, the linkage is easier to get to from the bottom side, so we're gonna jack it up and we're gonna crawl underneath there. So right away, I crawled under the car and I noticed a good, uh, you know, good amount of oil down here, which is uh, definitely not normal. So I went ahead and I pulled the splash guard off of here and you can see the oil on that intercool pipe right there going up to the intake manifold you can see the oil kind of leaking from that that's definitely kind of weird right there because if this piping is all sealed up you know it definitely should be because it's definitely uh you know boost piping uh i don't know what kind of boost these cars run maybe 10 20 psi i'm not really sure but uh we should definitely not be leaking oil out of there so that's a problem right there right away so i also crawled back here and you can see the wastegate actuator uh, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's that rod right up there, um, right there. You can see the end of it right beyond that CV joint right there. Um, but we don't seem to have any play in that. So since I can see right away that there's definitely something leaking from this uh, this boost hose right here, boost tube, um, I'm going to go ahead and pull it out. It looks like we only got one bolt there and uh, a bolt up at the top and then also a mounting bolt right there. So we got our boost tube out of the car right here and you can definitely see that it looks like the oil is coming from right in there. See there's no oil coming out from up top from the, the upper clamp right there so it's definitely leaking right there, it's leaking something. When you look at the front of the engine where this came out from, there is uh, there's no oil around anything else so this is definitely where our oil leak is that's leaking down the front of the engine right there and leaking all over the bottom. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to stuff something in here. Um, maybe a bottle of polish and then we're just gonna snug that clamp up and maybe hook an air hose this side and kind of just see if we can see any bubbling from around here maybe it's leaking from this plastic piece right here so I did find out what's causing a leak in this boost tube right here you know I can turn that that screw head by hand so it definitely wasn't tight um, I did want to check everything before I got to wrenching on this, just to see if I could find anything coming out. I didn't see any actual physical leaks. I probably didn't have this sealed up tight enough. My contraption wasn't good enough, but um, that's definitely where it was leaking. Oh, and you can see it even turns right there. So um, I know he said he had the intake manifold replaced and they probably didn't tighten that clamp all the way. Whether that's the cause of our low boost situation or not, um, 
I don't really know. You know, um, to cause something like that, I would think that this this hose would you know have to fly off here for it to leak that much. Um, but there's no real telling. Um, I also, while I was in here, I went ahead and I pulled out the uh, mass airflow sensor right here and cleaned it out and threw it back in. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this bottle out of here. We'll clean it and then we'll throw it back in the car. All right, so we were able to find one leak in the intercool piping into this car and we got that fixed, we cleaned it up. Uh, hopefully that works. I don't think it's gonna fix it. We'd be super lucky if that did fix it, but um, I don't think it was leaking enough to uh, trip the low boost sensor. Another thing I did notice was I found a coolant leak while I was wiggling the hose around there to get that top boost hose on. Um, looks like I wiggled something and maybe one of those plastic fittings on the coolant system is leaking a little bit. There's definitely a coolant leak and we're definitely gonna have to get that fixed. So right now we're gonna hook up the scan tool, see if we can't clear the codes, and uh, then we'll hook it up, we'll leave it hooked up and leave it monitor everything while we take for a spin and see if we can't uh, keep an eye on parameters and we'll check boost and all that while we're driving it. All right, so we got our codes cleared here and everything looks good. Um, no check engine light, that's not on anymore. And uh, we're reading our live data. Um, the one code was the number one cylinder misfire. Um, definitely an indication of either A, bad spark plugs or B, bad coil. So we're gonna go ahead and take it for a spin and see if we can't get it to uh, act up. Everything sounds good, everything's driving good. Um, engine isn't making any funny noises or anything, so. That's a good sign. Get into it a little bit and see what it does. Holy crap, this little thing goes. It's no Dodge Viper, but uh, it definitely moves your little car. It's kind of fun. So it has actually been about three weeks since we last filmed the car and we put about 600 miles in the car. We took a few trips, a few hours away and been driving it to work every day. Been having a lot of fun with the car. Now, we didn't get off completely scot-free with just fixing that hose clamp and tightening it down. We still have a check engine light that just came on two times in the first 300 miles that I drove the car. Now the first 300 miles, I drove it pretty hard. I drove it uh, pretty much up to red line just about every time I stepped on it and I wanted to make sure, you know, if I could get the codes to come back and they did. But the only time the codes really came back were well into red line. So I really don't blame the car. Um, I think the wastegate still could be a little bit loose on it. Now the other code that we got was low oil pressure and that did come on a few times and that came on after driving the car really hard. Now after doing a lot of reading, I found that it's pretty common that these cars will burn a little bit of oil. Now I did check the oil both times and both times that I checked it, the oil was about halfway in the safe zone. So after that, we did add oil to the car, we topped it off and we haven't had a problem since. Now to further correct the issue and make sure the light doesn't come on again, we are gonna do a full oil change with Castrol synthetic oil, which is recommended by VW, and the 5W40 is what we're gonna put in it. We're gonna put a new Bosch oil filter on it, and we're gonna put a new oil pressure sensor in it. Now, I haven't been able to get the misfire code to come back. Um, I don't know if maybe he was running lower octane fuel in it. I know that this car is recommended to run 91 and higher, and if you run 87, you can definitely get misfires in. Now, while I was driving the car, I did notice a few other things. The brakes definitely need to be replaced, and we need a wheel bearing. We definitely got the helicopter noise coming from that back wheel right there. So in the next video, we are gonna be doing some maintenance items of the car. Like I said, we're gonna do an oil change. We got windshield wipers. That's awesome. We got this new hub over here, so we're gonna be replacing that. And we also have our power stop drilled and slotted performance premium coated rotors with EBC Red Stuff brake pads. Now, I'm really excited to get these on the car and see how the car performs. I think it's gonna make a world of difference. We also went ahead and picked up some triple square sockets for working on the car. Now, these are definitely uh, required to get the brake calipers off and also to get the bolt on the back hub on and off. Now, there's also a lot of other triple square bolt heads on the car, so these will definitely come in handy in the future. Now, we do have some other big plans for the car. After we get our check engine light under control, we get our brakes, our hub, and we get all of our maintenance things taken care of on the car. We're gonna have a little fun with it. We're gonna put an exhaust, definitely an intake and possibly we're gonna make some big power with a KO4 turbo so do stay tuned to the channel thanks for watching today's video please like share subscribe and we'll see you next time